Welcome to Your Yes Filled Life. This episode contains themes around grief, death, and dying. If you feel like that might be triggering for you, maybe come back to another episode. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome to Your Yes Filled Life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle educator, healer, speaker, guide, and fierce advocate for your yes. I help sensitive and successful men and women find, reclaim, and live from their full embodied yes. Through empowering you to understand your energetic hygiene, establish healthy boundaries, and heal your nervous system, you'll be able to create your yes-filled life and move through your days with more freedom, more ease, and more joy. You'll hear inspiring stories of people who found their full-bodied yes, thought leaders who pursued their own dreams and are living life on their terms, and learn new ways to find the courage, joy, ease, and freedom to more fully step into your yes-filled life. Say no to the good so you can say yes to the great. Join me on this journey to discover your yes-filled life. Whether you're looking to break free from the golden handcuffs, start a new business, find your dream job, or simply live with more intention and mindfulness, I've got you covered. Let's explore the possibilities together and make your dreams a reality. Ready? Let's do this. Let's get you to your Yes Filled Life. Hello, and welcome to Your Yes Filled Life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle. Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about how you can more deeply trust your intuition and what happens when you have people around you, whether those are family members, mentors, advisors, teammates, friends, or family members who are trying to tell you something that you know is not aligned for you, how you can feel it how you can become aware of it, and then what to do. I can't wait to share this with you. And in the process, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of a life update. (laughs) I almost can't say it, a life update. So as I'm recording today, I am in my hotel room in Madison, Wisconsin. My sister and her husband live here with their two children and my parents live here. I wasn't born and raised here. I've never lived here. In fact, I've been here longer this particular stay in Madison than any other time. Um, and I do, I do love it here. So intuition comes in for most of us as though it's a knowing it's something that we are, we, we keep thinking about, it keeps crossing our awareness. It keeps dropping in. Sometimes it's a felt sense. Sometimes it's something you just know. Sometimes it's like a sentence that drops in where you can almost hear it, or perhaps You'll see something and you just know as soon as you see that, that there's something you need to do. If you are a highly empathic or compassionate person, one of the things that can happen for us is as we have people talking to us, whether that's, again, family, friends, team, advisors, mentees, mentors, however that is, it's very easy for us to confuse our own inner knowing for the resolve of other people. Now, because we're empathic and we have these abilities with high compassion, we naturally are a little bit more attuned to the emotionality and the energy of situations and people around us. And it can get really confusing, especially when there's people that we trust who are telling us something and our inner knowing says something different. So I'm going to tell you a story and give you a really crystal clear example of trusting intuition. So my dad had a health crisis last August and that health crisis was severe enough that he actually qualified for hospice last August, but he wasn't ready for hospice. He wasn't ready to, um, to do any of the things towards end of life because he felt like he had more life to live. Well, this summer that has all changed as his health has begun to decline at a really rapid pace. And so we were having discussions about what to do as a family does. Right. So I came out to Madison in, gosh, it must've been early July, like mid, mid July, somewhere in there. You know, this is my second month of full-time travel. In fact, my anniversary was just yesterday, August 11th. And so 
I spent the first three and a half weeks on the Washington coast in Long Beach. Then I went back to Portland for a week. Then I came out to Madison. And when I got back to Portland from visiting Madison, I stayed there for a week and then I moved on to Boise. And I was having such a fun time in Boise that I decided I wanted to stay an additional week and I reserved an Airbnb. And then I realized that I missed a day in my reservation, which meant that my first Airbnb, which was this super cute little ADU unit um, on the bench area of Boise, which is um, just a cute little neighborhood, I realized that I had no place to stay on one night because I just had misremembered dates. And so I reached out and asked my friend Kathy if I could stay the night with her, Bentley and me both. And she said, of course. And so that was the plan. So I was getting ready to check out of my first Airbnb and move to Kathy's. And I had a phone call with my parents and I could tell that something had changed. And I had this inner ping, you need to go to Madison. And I verbalized it to my parents and they both said, no, don't come to Madison. No, don't come. We don't want you to come. And I was a little bit, (laughs) a little bit hurt, honestly. Like, why don't you want me to come? Like, this kind of hurts my feelings, but okay. And so then I called my sister and said, Hey, I just talked to mom and dad. And they said these things, and I'm thinking I should come. And she said, No, don't come. You should not come to Madison. And I was like, Oh, okay. (laughs) Ouch again. Um, but okay. And it wasn't personal to me. It was just, they didn't want to feel guilty about me changing my travel plans. They also felt like they had so much to manage. They, They couldn't imagine how it would be to have me in town. And they felt bad, both my sister and my mom about not being able to entertain me, which I'm not in town. I'm not in Madison to be entertained at this point. So at any rate, I packed up my Airbnb after those phone calls, loaded up the car and drove over with Bentley to my friend Kathy's. And Kathy and I have been friends for for many years and we've done tons of things together. In fact, she's the one who trained me in Reiki and in Theta Healing. And so um, we just have this friendship that goes over the years and um, we've done some really special things together. And I love her family and her husband and her dogs. And so we just have this connection. And so it felt like a really nurturing, safe place to go. And I was really grateful for the opportunity to spend some time with her in between Airbnbs. And as I got over there, I could not shake the feeling that I needed to cancel the Airbnb, the next one that I was going to move into the next day. And the feeling just stayed with me. I didn't verbalize it, but I just kept feeling like something's off something's off about this. Is it the the place? Is it the location? Is it that it shouldn't be in Boise, but something's off. And as the day went on, I just kept getting this knowing something's off, something's off. I should not stay in that Airbnb. And then I had this thing that just kind of came in like a sentence. You need to get in the car and you need to drive to Madison. And I was like, whoa, okay. So I've been told by my family who lives in Madison not to come. And under no, I mean, they weren't mincing words about it. They weren't mean, they were nice, but they were telling me don't come to Madison. And I knew by Saturday afternoon with every fiber in my body that I needed to go to Madison. And so I was just sitting there quietly with Kathy. We were enjoying our time that afternoon. We let the dogs play. Bentley played with her two black labs and, and they were the first dogs that he met after I adopted him because Kathy and her husband, Chris invited me to um, stay with them at their Airbnb in Yahats, Oregon last summer, which was really fun. So Bentley knew the dogs and this time it went really well because he was so much more confident and they were having so much fun. They just zoomed around the yard all day. And Kathy and I went inside to the house um, after the dogs had played outside for a couple of hours. And Kathy looks over at me and she said, when are you, when are you leaving Boise again? And I said, well, it's funny you ask because on the Airbnb, I'm supposed to leave Boise next Saturday. And she looked at me and she said, are you sure that's 
soon enough? And I laughed and I said, what are you tracking? Are you tracking something with my family? And she's like, yeah, and you are too. And I was like, yeah, I am tracking that it's too late. That's, that's too late. I need to get to Madison before. And so, um, Kathy and I talked about it a little bit more. I got some clarity and I decided I was going to leave their house early in the morning, told my daughter what I was doing, but I didn't tell anybody else. So I drove from Boise to Salt Lake city, Utah. And then I wanted to assess my energy. I wanted to see like, do I have the energy to keep going? Cause this would be a good place to stop if not. And I thought, no, I, I have lots of, lots of energy. I'm still feeling really good. So I just tuned into my intuition again, which meant for me, I closed my eyes. I took some deep breaths. I just felt into my body, into my energy. And I was just thinking, is it safe for me to continue driving? Do I have the resources and energy and got a good solid yes. And then I heard a voice say, go to Cheyenne. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to go to Cheyenne. So I texted Kathy and Chris because they knew where I was and said, Hey, I think I'm going to end up heading to Cheyenne, which was still a significant distance away from Salt Lake city, but I'd left Boise early in the morning. And so I kept driving, kept driving and Bentley was with me. And so that was really fun to be able to stop. And it gave me a good excuse to get out of the car. And we took lots of walks and we played at rest areas and at gas stations in the green grass. And it was, it was a delightful trip. We got to Cheyenne like 8 PM that night. So we'd driven a long time. I think it's 10 hours or so from Boise and I had just this dream of wanting to like have comfort food <laughs> in the hotel. So I asked the hotel desk attendant if there was a pizza place that he recommended. And he said, there's only one here in Cheyenne. And so I called that pizza place and ordered uh, a margarita pizza, which is my favorite and had it delivered to the hotel. And then I was planning to eat part of it that night. And then the other part of it on the road the next day. But then something made me think, Hmm, I need to call my parents. So I called my parents, found out that some things had changed again. And you know, by then, you know, I'd been on the road for a day. I had known for two days that I was headed to Madison, but still had not told my Madison family because it just didn't feel right. But in this phone call, I learned from my sister. She said, you know, I just don't know when the right time to tell you to come is. And I was like, yeah, I get that. And I still just stayed quiet. And then my parents said the same thing again when I called them from Cheyenne. And I said, well, I really think I should come to Madison. And my mom said, okay, if you want to, I think that'd be good. That'd be good. I think you need to do what's right for you. I think, you know, if you think you should come, you should come. And I was like, oh, that's a change. And so I said to my mom, well, the good news is I'm halfway to Madison. <laughs> right now I'm in Cheyenne. And of course my mom was like, what you're where, why are you there? <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm on my way to you. I'm on my way to Madison. And so she was equally relieved and irritated, <laughs> but I just kept going. My intuition was like pulling me. It was like my body knew I had to get to Madison. So I kept driving. Um, the next day I drove to Lincoln, Nebraska, which was as far as I could get. Um, I was a little bit more tired from driving so far the day before. So I drove to Lincoln, stayed the night in Lincoln and went to the sunken gardens in Lincoln the next morning. And that was a place where my brother-in-law proposed to my sister. And so that was a special place for our family. We had wedding pictures there in the end of July in like this baking heat, but I just have such fond memories of that beautiful place. So Bentley and I went through the sunken gardens and then we continued our drive through the rest of Nebraska, which isn't very far. And then into Iowa. And I stopped in uh, West Des Moines to host my, my group coaching call for second chapter. So I pulled over to a park 
set up a hot spot on my phone and held my call for, for second chapter. And that was just so, it felt so good. It felt so aligned, so resourcing to be with those women and to be coaching and, and loving on them and holding space for them. And that just felt like seriously the perfect, the best thing to do. And then I got in the car and I kept driving and I got to Madison later that night, which was a day earlier than anyone was expecting me. And so there were some emotions about me arriving a day early and I still just like, I was steadfast, steadfast in my knowing that my intuition was right. I needed to get to Madison. So on Wednesday I was in Madison and it turned out that my mom needed to go do some things and it left me alone with my dad for several hours. And so during that time on Wednesday, I just opened up my phone. I opened up the voice notes app, the voice memos app, and I just recorded my dad talking and I asked him all kinds of questions and he knew I was recording it. He was all for it. And then he was so excited about it and had so much fun that he wanted to do the same thing again on Thursday. And so now on Thursday, he had a whole list of things that he wanted to make sure I asked him about because he wanted to talk about these things and he wanted to make sure that he said these things to these people on the recording. And so I spent my day Wednesday and Thursday in between calls and in between clients. I was just sitting with my dad with my voice memo notes open, asking him questions. And it was the best it was so good. Um, oh, big wave of emotions. Ooh. And I was so grateful to have that time. And then, um, you know, the, the day before or something, I don't know, my days are getting a little bit mixed up, you know, hospice care was initiated. And so the hospice team had come over and, and, that meant that they got to meet their hospice team, my parents being there, they got to meet their hospice team and, and things like that. And so then on Friday, we did a little bit more recording, but my dad wasn't feeling very good on Friday. And so we stopped the recording um, not very far in because he just wasn't feeling good. And on Saturday, <laughs> he asked for the family. He asked for everyone to gather around. And so we did. And I FaceTimed in my daughter so that she could be with us. And we just spent like, I don't know, three or maybe even four hours. And we were just gathered around my dad and, um, we just held hands with them. We took turns and we sang terrible renditions of hymns that nobody knows. <laughs> And then I finally was like, could we sing like something everybody knows? And maybe we could sing Christmas carols. So we sang a couple of Christmas carols and just cause we all knew them. And, and that was a really nice way. And then, you know, we kind of thought my dad was going to slip away on Saturday, but, um, he didn't, he just kind of fell asleep. And then we ordered lunch. We had lunch delivered from Panera and, um, we ate our Panera lunch, my whole family. And Maya was back in Portland. Of course she was actually, she wasn't in Portland. She was traveling, but that's another story. And while we were eating lunch, my dad woke up and was like, Hey, what's for lunch? <laughs> so we kind of chuckled and we were like, okay, well, it's not going to be today. And, um, so we kind of went our different ways on, on Saturday and, you know, I, I went back and had dinner with my parents and had some more time with them. And then Sunday, that was yesterday, things began to change very, very quickly. And today they're changing even more quickly. And my dad no longer has the ability to tell stories. And if I wouldn't have gotten in the car when when my intuition hit, I would have missed it. I would have missed it. And it was, it was not easy. It was not easy to, um, to go against what everyone was telling me. It was not easy 
to get in the car and drive 2,600 miles by myself with Bentley when everybody who I was going to see was telling me not to come. It made no sense. And yet I knew I had to. I knew I had to. Because I knew. I knew I was going to miss him if I didn't. And so, you know, this is a pretty high stakes version of trusting intuition. But you have opportunities all day, every day to listen to your intuition or not. And your intuition is connected to source, whether you call that God, the universe, your higher self, your angels, whatever you call it. Sorry. Now I'm (laughs) Uh, waves of emotion. Um, your, Your intuition is connected to your inner knowing. And when you let it speak and you listen to it, you're going to be amazed at how held you are. You'll be amazed at what you're guided to do. And you know what? Sometimes it will not make sense. And sometimes it will have you going against what everyone tells you. But if your intuition says that something is right for you, invitation to just do it and trust that it's all going to work out on the other side. So how does your intuition present? Well, it differs for everybody. So on the episode where I interviewed Crystal Clenny, she talked about 18 tracks of intuition that she's developed. She talked about the six intuitive tracks, the six empath tracks, and then the six niche tracks. And so that's a great episode to go listen to. If you haven't listened to it, go check it out because there's tons of information on intuition. I find I identify as an intuitive, but I have really, really strong empath abilities. And so I think my my primary way of gathering information is through my empathic abilities. And that means I feel it in a body sensation. So when I make a decision that does not feel aligned, I'm going to feel something in my body. I'm going to feel like dis-ease in my stomach, like a sense of, of gurgling or just kind of upset stomach. I'll feel tightness. I might get a headache. And when those things happen, I know that I'm going against my inner knowing. So I wanted to share that with you because that might be the same for you too, or maybe it comes in for you as something you hear, or as it's a repeating thought, or it is something that just continues to come up for you. Maybe you keep seeing signs for the same place that you're supposed to go visit. For example, Sedona, (laughs) that is something that has come up for me. I cannot tell you how many times I know I'm supposed to go to Sedona really soon. And ironically, I was going to go to Sedona as soon as I got done playing around in Boise. And um, I still may go there this fall, but we'll see. We'll have to see how things develop. All this is to say, you have more access to your intuition than you're giving yourself credit for. And when you begin to give yourself permission, and really that is the thing, you have to give yourself permission to know what you know. You're going to be absolutely amazed. I found the same thing happening in full-time travel. When I make decisions before they're fully baked, I end up canceling plans because they don't feel good. But when I wait until it's fully formed and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, this is the thing. Then I end up having the most amazing experiences. And let me tell you something, none of this is happening on my timeline. Like, (laughs) None of this is happening on my timeline. I'm not saying, you know, I'd like to go here on Tuesday and here on Thursday, and I'd like to have it all sewed up by Friday. Okay. I mean, that's what I say, but that's not what's happening because that's not how these things work. We can't control the timing. We can't control it. So sometimes you just have to kind of take a little trust fall with the universe and trust that when you get these, these repeating repeating things that they're your intuition. Now, one of the things that I'm really skilled at doing is helping people discern the difference between intuition and intellect. So here's how you can tell you're in intellect. If you notice that the 
thought is really in your head, in your mind. And you notice that there's a lot of competing thoughts. Should I do this or should I do this? Or is this the best or is this the best? Or it could do this. If you notice that kind of energy, you are in your intellect. If you are fact checking, you're in your intellect. If you're writing pros and cons, you're in your intellect. Now your intellect is really important and valuable. We need our intellect. It's what makes you really smart. And also intellect is not the same thing as your intuition. And sometimes they're going to tell you two different things because your intellect is capable of making you overthink and overthink and overthink where your intuition, it's going to be just really clear. It's one thing. The difference is that the intuition is often more subtle. So it comes in a little bit softer than the intellect for most people, which is why it's harder to listen to. So here's a way that you can really learn to listen. Are you ready? You're going to need to slow down. You're going to need to take some white space. And it's also really helpful if you apply my power framework for people with high compassion and empathy. In fact, I'm teaching a free masterclass on the power framework on Friday, August 16th from 8 to 9 15 AM Pacific time. So come join me for that power framework masterclass. You can register at brendanwinkle.com forward slash power. It's going to be juicy. And you know, the thing is when you have these high levels of empathy and compassion, it's easy to overgive. It's easy to prioritize other people's opinions and views and their knowing above your own. It's easy to confuse external validation for worthiness. And I'm going to teach you how using the power framework for highly compassionate and empathic entrepreneurs, how you can really prioritize your own inner knowing and listen to your own intuition. So this is a short episode because I got to run back over to my parents' house. But I just want you to know that there's duality, right? I know you know this, but I'm just going to be really overt and transparent and tell you there's duality. Nothing is all good or all bad, including death. So I am being very intentional about taking really extra good care of myself with sleep, nutrition, mindfulness, my breath work exercise and hydration. I'm very, very intentionally taking excellent care of my body to make sure that I'm resourced and able to fully function for my family. I invite you to do the same thing because you know what? <laughs> you can't help somebody if you're depleted, if you're exhausted, if you're overcome. So go get resourced, go feel good and have some joy, have some fun. I have been totally jamming out on my high vibes playlist, which if you don't have it yet, if you don't have my high vibes playlist, you need it. DM me on Instagram and say, I want your playlist because I'm telling you what this playlist, I can leave my parents in tears. And I put my little AirPod in, I walk over to the hotel, I grab Bentley and I'm listening to my playlist. And by the time we're just maybe five minutes into the walk, I'm feeling great again. There's duality, right? I can experience the emotionality and also maintain my energetic configuration of a high vibration. And that's the real key for a yes filled life, letting yourself feel all the feelings and also giving yourself grace and intentionally having some fun. So go have some fun, go have some joy. DM me on Instagram if you want that playlist. If you like this episode or feel like it served you in any way, would you please consider leaving a rating and review? And if you loved it, would you please share it with a friend? Thank you so much for listening. Bye for now.